that the technologies may be new, but the power relations are not new. They're sort of new iterations or new uh, forms of old power relations that we've had a lot of experience as feminists, as feminist activists uh, in handling and challenging and pushing back and even to some extent uh, overcoming. Practical uses of ICT technologies are democratizing, but the political uses can be subject to slippage and are mapped on social relations, existing social relations, existing political relations. And it is important to keep this balancing act between the virtual and the real, between politics as sentiment and politics as practice, you can very well be sitting in the private sphere of your home or call it patriarchy or, uh, or you know, your drawing room and you could log in and be at the click of a mouse could be part of the public sphere. Now where is the struggle? And we have to keep in mind that um, with the information society um, there's a, a, a so much um, sort of technophilia or utopianism around it as though it's going to uh, it's going to change the nature of citizenship and bring people into the citizenship fold. Um, that we, we also um, need to keep in mind that um, when uh, we look at new ICTs, uh, we're also looking at a whole um, new um, uh, set of inequalities that have grown out of old inequalities but now have to do with issues like um, living in a knowledge society, an information economy, a service economy, and so on, in which women have been they become um, desired more as workers than as citizens critiquing the system. I'm going to talk about two dynamics that shape technological possibilities for collective action. Um, the, the first one uh, concerns the forces, the actors that control information flows, largely but not exclusively for profit. And the second dynamic concerns social, social movements that are working towards establishing an information commons, that is a collection of shared information resources that are in principle freely available to all. I would like to argue that both these dynamics invite us to rethink the connection between citizenship and collective action, advocacy and technological literacy, but so by showing us that technologies are not mere tools. They are processes that express specific values and agendas that structure participation in very concrete and specific ways. We heard uh, why do we pay in Brazil a certain amount of money for the same um, uh, bandwidth, uh, which is 17 or 18 times more expensive than someone pays in London, for example. Why does that happen? What is the difference? It's a, an issue of the ownership of the infrastructure and the interests that are be operating behind it. And not even the governments have the answer. What is the price of the transit of the packets of the data, of the information? that runs on this, on this network, why is this price so much more expensive for Brazil than for other countries in the north? And this is something that affects all the citizens in developing countries, but especially women, and the poorer women, which are the poorest citizens in, in our societies. <laughs> 